parallel session number three in this afternoon. Uh, allow me to introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Raja Iskandar Putra bin Raja Mustafa. I am the chairperson uh, for today's session. And with me, uh, we have uh, Mr. Kairil, uh, Mr. Kairil Anwar Bahari, who will be the co-chair for today's session. So basically, we will be responsible in making uh, this session uh, short and sweet. Uh, I know mine would be the shortest here, but I'm not sure whether it's going to be the, short, the sweetest uh, because I see here we have uh, five papers to be presented, four in the category of uh, community-based tourism and one in fashion. All are great papers here. Uh, so it's very exciting to uh, be able to hear to, one of, uh, to every one of your presentation later. So before we start, uh, allow me to do some housekeeping. So um, I would like to request everyone in attendance uh, to mute your mic. Uh, if you're not speaking, if you're not presenting, please mute your mic. Uh, so that we give uh, due respect and give some space to the presenter to present uh, their best. And um, uh, if you have any question, you can use the chat box uh, to write your, your questions uh, and uh, we will be reading it later on during the question and answer session. Uh, talking about that, for presenters today, we are going to give uh, you, uh, including myself, we are going to have 10 minutes for presentation and five minutes for Q&A. Uh, I believe later on when there is uh, approximately two minutes left uh, during for our presentation, either myself uh, or Mr. Kyril will, uh, will remind, uh, will be giving a reminder on the two minutes uh, for, for us to f finish up what we have. Okay, all right. In terms of that, let me check what else do I need to uh say mm, okay at the end of the session we will have a uh, group photo so uh i believe uh, you received the backdrop for our conference you may use that as your backdrop uh for the group photo later on and i would like to uh, invite you later on to all of us all of us here to uh switch on your camera later on so that we can see your lovely face and maybe see you in your work from home look. You know, there's a lot of work from home look here. Okay. Um, all right. Um, the time now is 2.18. Mr. Kyril, do you have anything to say uh, before we introduce the all the presenters? I, I think so. No question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. No problem, Mr. Kyril. Uh, just remember to take note of the attendance and also what else do you need to do? You need to, to you, yeah, we have your checklist, right? Okay, all right, no problem. So allow me to introduce uh, the papers or the, the session for today. We have five presenters. The first presenter is going to be uh, myself. Uh, I'm going to be presenting the paper Sharia Compliant Hotels, a study of service quality and satisfaction at Perdana Hotel, Kota Baru, Kelantan. Uh, for the second uh, present presentation will be from Madam Pania Danadi uh, with the paper titled Residence Attitude and Quality of Life Post-Community-Based uh, Tourism Development in Thailand. The third paper uh, is Value Co-Creation in Community-Based Tourism, a Marketing Management Perspective, who, uh, which will be presented by Madam Melinda uh, Elias Siti Asma Yunus. And the fourth presenter will be Mr. Pariwat Somnuek, uh, I hope I, I did not uh, wrongly mention uh, uh, your names, uh, but please bear with me. Uh, you, uh, Mr. Pariwat will be presenting the paper Key Success Factors of Community-Based Tourism Management, uh, the case study of uh, Bangkok Muang Prototype Community in Buriram Province, Thailand. And last but not least, uh, by Madam Mariati. Uh, the effect of entrepreneurship, education, and entrepreneurial motivation on work readiness of fashion design study program students. All right. So those are the papers in this session. Uh, quite interesting papers here. Uh, okay. So time now is 2.20. So before we start, uh, uh, usually, uh, okay, if I'm going to be honest, this is my first time 
presenting and in an online conference before this we are having a physical conference uh, so usually the afternoon session is the time where the presenter will be thinking about the cultural tours and maybe also the swimming pool uh, but uh, let's keep it short and sweet okay and just let's uh, share knowledge together all right okay so if i may uh, let me sh start the ball rolling with my presentation Okay, I would like to request Mr. Kyril to uh, uh, to take the time and just remind me at uh, two minute mark. Okay, all right. Okay, I will. Okay, no problem. Okay, all right. So, okay, without further ado, let's start. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned just now, my name is Rajesh Kanda Putra Raja Mustafa. I'll be representing uh, my colleagues uh, from the Faculty of Hotel Tourism Management, UITM Penang. Uh, I'll be presenting the paper titled Sharia Compliant Hotels, a Study of Service Quality and Satisfaction at Perdana Hotel Kota Baru Kelantan. So, first things first, I believe that uh, there is a need for me to uh, explain or maybe share uh, the general uh, meaning of what is Sharia and also what it means by being Sharia compliant. In general, Sharia is the Islamic rule of law uh, uh, where it, it basically dictates everything on, uh, on the livelihood of a Muslim from what is permitted, which is which what we call halal, the term is halal, and what is not permitted in haram. Uh, the Sharia law encompasses uh, a lot of things, not only in terms of um, food, uh, it encompasses how we behave in society and so much more. Okay, and when we talk about being Sharia compliant is this establishment, this organization use, uh, embeds this Sharia law into whatever and however they're doing their, their, their work or however they're, they're, they're pro progressing with their own uh, establishment. And in terms of other terms used for Sharia compliant, uh, you can see this used interchangeably. Uh, you have Muslim friendly, you have halal accom accommodations, you also have um, halal tourism, uh, so those are uh, similar to Sharia compliant, being Sharia compliant. Now, in terms of the uh, background of the study, based on the uh, statement made by the Honourable Minister Datuk Sri Nancy Shukri, the uh, Minister from the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Malaysia. Now, in 2019, uh, the 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 Muslim tourist arrival, the number, the figure for Muslim tourist arrival in 2019 were at 5.33 million. And that uh, translates to 16.7 billion Malaysian ringgit, uh, which is quite a lot of revenue uh, to bring in for tourism. And if you look at the report from uh, the Global Muslim Travel Index 2021, uh, the figure, this is the figure for worldwide, 160 million Muslim tourists uh, uh, was uh, basically um, counted in terms of uh, in 2019. And Malaysia is one of the ideal travel destinations because uh, Malaysia is a, a majority Muslim country and it has features, it has environment, it has uh, facilities that is quite similar to those uh, from uh, the Muslim country themselves. If I can share the top 10 countries uh, that to uh, top 10 countries of origin of these visitors, the Muslim visitors, we can see from the ASEAN region, Singapore, Indonesia, Brunei, Thailand. We can see from the Middle East, we have Saudi Arabia. We have uh, big countries like India, China. Uh, those are the top 10 countries uh, of origin uh, in terms of visiting Malaysia. Now, uh, in when we talk about Muslim tourists, we need to uh, have a bit of a description now. Why? Uh, in, in, in terms of what do they look for when, when they travel because it's a specific group in terms of uh, travels, uh, travelers. So here I would like to present in terms of uh, three, uh, three findings here. Uh, number one is talking about uh, this study uh, on Indonesian Muslim tourists, on the importance of halal tourism attributes which are social facilities, uh, sorry, social, 
facilities, food and beverages, local staff and services. And it is highlighted that, it's noted that uh, facilities, halang facilities is one of the things that considered uh, when viewing and choosing a destination. Uh, in another study on Russian Muslim hotel guests, the attribute most in demand are bidet in bathroom, halal food, place of worship, no alcohol in hotel rooms, Qibla. Uh, Qibla is for your information, is the direction of prayers for Muslim, uh, conservative staff dress and separate recreational facilities. So we see here, not only on the facilities, but also on the staff themselves, the, the, the service giver. If you look here, this is a, a screen grab from the Global Muslim Travel Index. Uh, here they, they, uh, they conducted a study on these 240 respondents who are Muslim travelers and they ranked uh, these three priorities, need to have, good to have and nice to have and basically asked the respondents to rate them. So if you look at this need to have, which is the basic necessity that they need to travel, uh, if you see from on the right there, you have halal food. 74% of them uh, request, uh, requires or need halal food and you see prayer facilities, you have water-friendly washroom, and also no Islamophobia, which is quite important uh, post 9-11, uh, when the, the, uh, there are concerns about uh, discrimination and also safety in terms of the, the travelers themselves. So uh, now, how does this tie in with service quality? Uh, so if we look at service quality, the definition of service quality by Parasuraman himself, uh, it is the difference between perception of service rendered and what was expected by the customer. And if you if you remember, just if you recall just now when we talk about it's all the expectation, what do they need, what they expect from their travels and what when they visit a country. Uh, and then when you look at the five dimensions of service quality, uh, you have tangibility, reliability, you have responsiveness, assurance, empathy. This links with uh, what has been said just now we talk about the facilities. And that is intangibility, the product themselves. We talk about the staff just now. It's in this responsiveness. You have this uh, empathy. Uh, so it is, there is this link between service quality and also uh, what the, the, the segment needs. All right. Now, where is the gap? Uh, so the, here, it, I'm going to talk about why this study was conducted. Uh, the data collected from Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Malaysia 2020, uh, there are only 30 hotels that were given Muslim-friendly accommodation recognition. This is the recognition of the Sharia compliance uh, accommodation. And out of those 30, uh, not out of the 30, if you compare that with the data from Malaysian Association of Hotels, there are a total of 985 in total in Malaysia of hotels. And compare that with just 30 hotels that are recognized, uh, that is uh, equivalent to just 3%. So that is a, a little, uh, that is just a, a small amount of uh, properties uh, catering to this Muslim friendly market. So there is this certain scarce, scarcity in terms of uh, uh, supply. So there is a need uh, to further understand what makes guests satisfied in terms of the current offering so that we can develop for future offerings. So therefore this study is with the idea uh, to investigate or to, to describe the relationship of service quality in Sharia compliant hotels and guest satisfaction. All right. Now, in terms of the methodology, uh, this is a, a quantitative nature, a quantitative uh, study in nature. Uh, questionnaires were disseminated. Uh, why was Perdana Hotel Kota Baru chosen? It is because it's one of the 30 hotels uh, recognized as the uh, Sharia compliant. Uh, in terms of population, you have uh, the customers that patronize uh, Perdana Hotel Kota Baru. Uh, in terms of sampling technique, uh, we are using uh, the, the researcher use non-probability and purposive sampling due to the fact that uh, a sampling frame was not able to get, was not able to be distinguished, uh, which usually you can uh, find with uh, social sciences studies. Uh, in terms of our sample size based on uh, the G Power software and factoring in the response rate of hospitality research and also uh, thinking about the, uh, the, the missing values, uh, the researcher has decided on 200. Okay, so if you look at this uh, correlation table here, uh, out of the 200 questionnaire disseminated, 
uh, only 186 will be uh, was able to be used uh, for uh, data analysis. And if I would, if you look at the table, uh, all of the uh, variable here uh, are significant with a p value of uh, lower than 0 0.05. And if I can direct you to empathy, you can see that there the R value is 8.65, sorry, 0 0.865. That is the highest R value here. And uh, if you look at the lowest, the lowest is at responsiveness, which is 0 0.631. But uh, all of the variables have uh, this relationship with uh, satisfaction. Uh, so uh, all of them have this certain relationship. One is strong and one is average relationship there. OK, so in terms of the hypothesis for this uh, study, uh, that was constructed, uh, the hypothesis is, uh, was there is a relationship between service quality and satisfaction in Sharia compliant hotel. That's based on the result just now. This postulated hypothesis uh, was supported. And uh, based on, uh, it's quite similar to other studies. Uh, this, uh, numerous, uh, based, uh, this is basically supported uh, uh, by numerous authors, uh, such as uh, as shown in front. Okay. In conclusion, uh, in conclusion, uh, the potential is there. Why do I say the potential is there? I understand that just now when I talked about uh, the the stats, the data that I mentioned, it is prior to COVID-19. Uh, if you look at the table here, this is uh, another screen grab from Global Muslim Travel Index 2021. This shows the market growth in terms of uh, Muslim travel. If you look at 2019, that is the most in terms of 160 million. That is the one that I was mentioning just now. And if you look at the effect of COVID-19 in 2020 and 2021, it drops drastically to below 50 million. Uh, but based on the, the trend of uh, uh, relaxed travel, uh, the trend of uh, double dose uh, programs, uh, the basically the experts predict that uh, year by year, we will see the increase. And by 2023, we would be recovering uh, almost 80% of what we experienced, the global, the global, global experience in terms of 2019, the figures. So that is, there is a potential there uh, So for growth. And as I mentioned just now, there's only in Malaysia, in the current situation in Malaysia, there's only 30 hotels. So that, there is the potential to support this market growth. All right, and then in terms of recommendation, Due to the fact that this is a, a case study, uh, the, the, rec the recommendation from us, the researcher, is that there should be a bigger setting to increase the validity and generalizability of the study itself. And uh, the researchers also think that it would be interesting, quite interesting, if you were to have a comparative study between uh, Muslim travelers who frequent uh, the Sharia compliant hotel and also the, the input from non-Muslim travelers who frequent uh, this uh, so-called uh, Sharia compliant hotel. Okay, and I believe that is it from me. So I would like to end with thank you. Any questions? Any question from the floor? Let me check the chat box. Oh, okay, Mr. Khalil, I didn't see the, the two minutes left because I was looking at the slide presentation. Maybe uh, after this, uh, I'll announce the two minutes uh, uh, for the presentation. Uh, okay, uh, if there are no questions, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. All right. I'm Encik Raja Putra. Mm -hmm. I'm Dr. Santana Mary here. Yes. Okay. Um, I just want to find out uh, one mm -hmm. thing from you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just now you have mentioned that uh, you have taken the um, your case study was from a hotel in Kelantan, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And your sample is only 200, uh, yes, yes. which you only received by 186, mm -hmm. uh, which I believe it's quite low, the response uh, figure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, why didn't you? Uh, is that that is the only hotel that was available in uh, Kelantan that is Muslim friendly? Uh, the, uh, I mean, the hotel that get Muslim friendly recognition. Why don't you take uh, any other hotels also in Kelantan 
which also has a recognition. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Thank you, Doctor, for that question. Uh, in terms of the choice for hotel, uh, because actually, if I if I was to be honest, this is actually a a a, a study conducted between supervisor and the, their students. So they they had this uh, this uh, the only uh, way that they are going to get data is from that. Uh, particular hotel because they did their internship at that hotel so uh, to me that that is the reason why they choose that hotel but in terms of the uh, the sample size uh, I, I actually put the the detail in the slide before but I, I time myself that it's more than 10 minutes so but I can explain now in terms of the the question the sampling size uh, we based it on the G power software and based on the calculation from the G Power software, it, it requires only 84, only 84 sample size. But we feel that, uh, as I mentioned just now, based on the findings of previous uh, researchers, that uh, Malaysian uh, hospitality research in Malaysia, the response rate is around 58%. So couple that with the 84, we increased it to 142. And based on the notion that uh, we feel that maybe there might be some missing values and unusable uh, data, unusable questionnaires, so we increased it to 200. So that's how we calculated 200. Okay. Hmm. But uh, is there any other hotels in Kelantan that also have got the uh, Muslim-friendly recognition oh, it, apart from this hotel? If I'm uh, honest, I'm not quite sure, actually. I can get back to you uh, with that uh, information. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Anyone else with a question to ask? Okay, can we proceed? All right. Um, I would like to invite uh, the next presenter, which is uh, Madam Pandiada Nadi, uh, with her pre paper, Residence Attitude and Quality of Life Post-Community-Based Tourism Development in Thailand. And the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairperson, Co-Chairperson, and Participants. My name is Panyada Nadi Amsadi Gadre School of Tourism Management, National Institute Development Administration, or NIDA in Thailand. My advisor is Anne Suwari Aston. Today, I would like to present research paper. Uh, the title is Resident Attitude and Quality of Life, Post-Community-Based Tourism Development in Thailand. Outline for presentation as follow. Blackout of the study, literature review, methodology, results, and conclusion. Okay, blackout of the study, community-based tourism or CBT exists in many regions around the world, especially in developing countries, for example, Indonesia, Laos, and Thailand to develop and promote tourist attraction. That are the voice to, uh, the of 38 provinces into six area, six specific, sorry, six specific, six special area and three tourism cluster in with many famous and standardized tourism community. Our local such as Mekampong are over 100 year old village. Mekampong village, a uh, very unique place, is uh, situated in the Chiang Mai, Thailand, with a natural environment. CBT is a tall strand in uh, village organization. It can be based on natural, cultural, local lifestyle to develop as a tourist, tourism products and service. The most Crucial aspect for developing CBT is have a uh, is have an agreement and participant by local community. The contribute the contribute of adopting CBT is to create job opportunity for the community, increasing income, and expected to have a better health wellness among the community. However, there may have some negative impacts 
after CBT have been developed, such as uh, environmental damage, lost local identity, and tourists may bring some disease to the village, hence cause unhealth wellness as whole. In order to develop CBT, community needs to understand and prepare both resources and people to be ready and the strength the community tourism development. Classification of the study. In the study of community tourism, there are many foreign scholars who have uh, conducted various study in various aspects as follow concept of community, tourism development, community, uh, sorry, community tourism management, marketing, tourism, community, the, communi the, the tourism community analysis. It is taken the related resource about the quality of community-based tourism in order to grant academic gap that it can be clearly seen in the table as follows. From the researcher has issue about tourism by communities, study of the context of the community, marketing, management for the study of the quality of life in people in the community. That is what research is the effect of tourism impact upon uh, quality of life of residents in the community. Therefore, the study of research found that the research programs are important and beneficial to the local community as part of the solutions to the problem of community tourism management. After the community push community-based tourism development, community development model to be applied the community for sustainability. Research aim and objective. The aim of this study is to investigate resident attitude towards quality of life post community based tourism development. One, to study resident attitude toward community based tourism. Two, to study quality of life to less than classify into four states, including interaction state, growth state, maturity state, and decline state and to study overall satisfaction of resident quality of life in community-based tourism. And next, let little, little review. This research emphasized on the study for suggest the research together concept, theory and re related research finding the recommendation including community-based tourism, attitude, resident attitude toward tourism, quality of life concept and theory, and product life cycle. Methodology, a quality of, uh, a, qual a qualitative study was used for the study, data collecting process for the study, employ, employ in-depth interview techniques, because it might reflect the reality, which are meaningful to the aim of the study to obtain the group of sample more suitable to the study aims. The community less than group, consisting of less than from the Mekampong village in Thailand. The researcher followed Kolasi in 1978 data analysis process. Uh, results, according to the study, is what found that everyone who lives in Mekampong village is involved in tourism, whether directly or indirectly, such as being a homestay operator, selling souvenir, selling food, or being a maid. The principal income of the community come from the tourism initially. People in the community had been farmers, but when tourism 
was introduced that turned to tourism. The result in the community being affected both uh, positively and negatively as a follow. One, increasing, improve the economy in the community with make people in the community have a better quality of life. Two, the environment is destroyed by the household waste increasing from the opening the homestay and the arrive, arrival for uh, arrival of more tourists. Two minutes. Three. Two yes. minutes left. Okay. Problem involve foreigner running the business and buying the land in the community have occurred. Theoretical implication, the researcher proposed the theoretical framework of uh, product life cycle, resident attitude and quality of life. Practical implication, resident in the community may apply the finding and impact of the study by improve their quality of life to achieve environmental and cultural sustainability. And results in uh, limitation, further study may be applying the quali qu quality of life development model to the community and collect the result for further model development. Okay, thank you. Thank you for attention. All right, thank you, Madam Pania Danadi, uh, for the presentation. Any questions from the floor? Any question from the floor on the paper itself? Good afternoon. Afternoon. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I have uh, some questions. Uh, my name is Paripan Gaonet. I come from Nidar and uh, I am a lecturer at Lachapat University, Chiang Rai in Thailand. Yeah, I, I would like to know that when research uh, done, how is a social impact for the community-based tourism? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, for social implication, the community leaders should seriously apply a quality life strategy with a local community, especially the place where become tourist, tourism attractions. It is not focused on improving income, but the quality of life uh, of the people in the community should be concentrated on. Yes, uh, after I finish a uh, research, thank you. Okay, thank you for answer. All right, thank you. Uh, anyone else with a question? We have 17 participants here. Anyone else with a question? Oh, hello. Okay, all right, go ahead. Okay, um, my name is Jamilia. I am from UITM uh, Sabah. So I would like to ask the presenter on how this community in the Bay overcome the problem of increase in the wastage due to tourism. Oh, sorry. A grand piece because I think so I have a sound noise. Okay, uh, I repeat again my question. Uh, how this community in the May village overcome the problem of the increased wastage due to the uh, tourism activities? Uh, for, for, for tourists, right? I mean, how did they overcome the uh, wastage, increase in wastage due to the uh, tourism activities? Uh, to, uh, if a more tourist, tourists uh, have uh, some, something such as a wave uh, from uh, tourists uh, in, in uh, CBT or community and have uh, one problem, uh, I think community should be uh, things and use uh, some things for uh, something something for air for uh, in uh, decrease 
the problem. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Uh, I believe uh, that's already five minutes. Uh, if if any one of you have any more questions for the presenter, I can. I think uh, you can actually contact the presenter personally. So you can have a, a lovely discussion after the session. Okay, all right. Thank you. Uh, next, let's move on to the third presenter, uh, Madam Melinda. Madam Melinda, are you are you ready? Yes. Okay, go ahead. The floor is yours. Okay, good day. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairperson, uh, fellow presenters, and also the audience. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Melinda Lesita Asma Binti Yunus. I'm from the Department of Business and Management, University Technology Mara, uh, Chawangan, Pulau Pinang. I'll be presenting my uh, study uh, on value co-creation in community-based tourism, a marketing management perspective. Okay, so uh, maybe some of the audience, uh, participants, uh, presenters, and also audience might uh, question, what am I doing here presenting? Uh, I'm from a marketing background. What am I doing presenting here in the tourism uh, conference? Okay. So the main reason uh, for me to be here is to get some insight or feedback or opinion from the experts and also scholars in the area of tourism uh, regarding my study. Okay, so I really, really hope uh, you can give uh, feedback uh, after the presentation. Okay. Sorry, it doesn't move. Okay, so uh, before uh, I proceed, okay, let's look at the uh, background, okay, uh, of this study. Uh, we look at the sustainable development goals. There are 17 goals, okay, to be achieved by 2030, by year 2030. Okay, so we have passed phase one from uh, 2016 to 2020, and we have another two phases, okay, 2021 until 2025, and also 2020 until 2023, uh, 2030, sorry. Okay, but due to COVID-19, okay, all the initiatives, all the projects has been uh, stopped or maybe postponed, okay, and the, all the nations all over the world focus more on uh, good health and well-being, okay, uh, handling the uh, health of the nations and also now, especially in Malaysia, the government uh, is in the phase of uh, economic recovery plan, okay, so we look at the uh, goal, we look at goal number eight, which is decent work and economic growth. Okay, so this is what I'm, uh, I am going to focus for my uh, proposed study. Okay, decent work and economic growth. Okay, so uh, I will be just uh, uh, going through all the uh, 12 targets in goal 8. Okay, goal 8 is about promote sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full um, uh, and productive employment and decent work for all. Okay, if you can see here, this uh, is taken from Department of Static, uh, Statistics in Malaysia. Okay, we have target 8.1, 8.2, 8.3 and so on. Okay, 8.4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 8.A, 11, 8.B is uh, 12. So there are 12 targets with 17 indicators. Okay, now, okay, uh, so... In 2019, okay, uh, 2020, okay, the world, okay, has been uh, 
severely affected by coronavirus and uh, it affect the economic all over the world okay so this uh, is taken i'm sorry I, I i missed i think it is hidden behind the image okay this is taken from the united nation world tourism organization our website okay as we can see here okay before covid 19 okay the economic uh the global economic growth was slowing down okay but after uh covid 19 okay the world faces the worst economic recession and of course tourism is facing unprecedented challenges okay so this is the global challenge okay tourism uh has become the uh has is facing the unprecedented challenges okay so why am i going to uh tourism okay why am i focusing on tourism okay so this is an attempt to go uh, uh cross dis disciplinary okay because when i look at target 8.9 it stated that uh, by 2030 Okay, devise and implement policies to promote sustainable tourism that creates jobs and promotes local culture and products. So uh, then I look at I look at other reports. Okay, uh, okay. Before that, let's look at community-based tourism. Okay, how community-based tourism related to target eight point nine? It's stated here that. It's about creates job and promotes local culture and products. So when we look at community-based tourism, okay, the definition of community uh, tourism is family and or individually run businesses with a greater or lesser degree of coordination intended to deliver community benefit. Okay, this is defined by Zielinski et al. 2020. Okay, so if uh the concept of CBT, okay, uh, as uh, explained by Kuzadi at all 2020, homestay provides tourists with a sense of feeling at home, interaction with the host family, first-hand relationship with locals, the experience of the local culture and low-cost accommodation. So from this definition and also concept, uh explained by uh these scholars okay we can see that community based tourism is uh, a business or enterprise that can help okay to create to uh, achieve okay this uh, target 8.9 to create job and promote local culture and product okay so okay a paper a study uh, or a paper written by S. Gupta 2016, okay, uh, he outlined or summarized okay, the benefit of community-based tourism, which includes job creation, asset buildings, inward investment, community empowerment, infrastructural in, uh, improvement, market for local product, and also environmental awareness. Okay, so from this uh, study, we can see that community uh, tourism has a lot of benefit especially to the local community okay now we look at community-based tourism in malaysia okay i'm not going to explain uh cbt in details because i'm uh, i'm going to explain uh the marketing concept okay how i apply the marketing concept in this study so with 10 minutes i don't think i have the time to explain everything in detail okay so in malaysia Homestay is defined as a form of experience where tourists stay with the host family of the homestay operator who has been registered with the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture Malaysia. Okay? Only those who registered with the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture Malaysia are considered as homestay. Two minutes. Okay. So, okay, so I, uh, this is the uh, statistic, the data showing the, the number of registered homestay clusters by states in Malaysia. Okay, if you can see here, okay, the, to uh, the total number of homes, homestay or homestay cl cluster is 222. 
the number of villages 371 total number of participants uh, or houses 4286 uh, and the total rooms available for tourists is uh, 684 so you can see that there are a big number okay, of uh, community based enterprises in malaysia okay if, if we look at uh, another report Okay, by uh, published by the Malaysian Economic Planning Unit, okay, SDG roadmap for Malaysia for phase one from 2016 to 2020. Okay, uh, I uh, I took this uh, report straight uh, from the uh, I took this uh, information straight from the uh, public uh, the publication. Okay, if you can see here. Okay, you can see that uh, the target 8.9, okay, it's about device and implement uh, policies to promote sustainable tourism that create job and promotes local culture and products. So, the issues, okay, that the government has uh, been, uh, has faced during the, during phase one is local culture and products are not being optimally utilized, hindering the development of sustainable and vibrant tourism industry. Okay, and then we look at the initiative, okay, initiative uh, by the government, what they do, okay, to enhance promotion uh, on arts, culture and heritage products at international level to increase exports and attract investment opportunity. Okay, if you look at this, uh, the, the, what I try to highlight here is about the product development, arts, culture and heritage product international level okay so from this uh, report okay i find a f uh, three gaps okay first uh, they focus on tourism product development okay marketing is not just about product development so it should be uh, focusing uh, on marketing strategy more on the resources and then uh, the the Business also, CBT, uh, co uh, community based tourism, okay, focus more on firm and customer or diet relationship, whereas the firm should focus more on value co creation among the stakeholders. And number three, uh, generally the government, will, they talk about the uh, total income of the CBT, focus on the tourism income as the GDP indicator, which is the macroeconomic. Whereas uh, we should look uh, more into the microeconomic, which is about the pro, uh, the firm profitabil profitability, which is the financial viability. Okay, so uh, just go through. Okay, uh, the purpose of this study is to investigate the influence of digital technology and digital marketing towards value co-creation and the impact of value co-creation on financial sustainability of community-based tourism. Okay, uh, so uh, we, we want to look at, okay, I just make it short, look at the relationship between the digital technology uh, resources, okay, towards uh, the uh, capability, uh, digital marketing, digital marketing capability and value cooperation uh, towards financial sustainability and then uh, the in, uh, to empirically, empirically test the RA theory, the role, we look at the role of uh, value co-creation as a mediator and to develop a conceptual model consisting all the uh, variables that I mentioned uh, before. Okay, so this is the scope of the study. We focus on target 8.9 and the marketing management in this era perspective and CBT in Malaysia. Okay, so, uh, okay, let me skip. Okay, so this is the underpinning theory. Okay, we use the resource advantage uh, theory of competition. Okay, by hand, and this is uh, uh, the framework, okay, uh, from Han and Madhavaram 2020. So, if we can see here, uh, this framework consists of resources, market position, and financial performance. And there are other uh, partners, stakeholders involved, okay. And this is the uh, framework for the marketing entrepreneurship interface by Hansen et al. 2020 which is also include the resources, from characteristic, the actors, okay, uh, and uh, function and processor concept from marketing and entrepreneurship, and the outcome is the changes, value, and opportunities, and there are other 
uh, actors uh, or partners uh, in the ecosystem. Okay, so value co-creation. Okay, I just uh, go through, okay, the value co-creation, okay. Uh, VCC is applicated through customer participation to enhance uh, service quality and has significant relationship with sustainability, open innovation and sharing economy. Okay, so VCC also play, uh, play a vital role in re-engineering service uh, science through resource integration and actor engagement using media and online uh, communities within the service ecosystem perspective. Okay, so uh, when we apply uh, marketing concepts, so we have to know what marketing is. It's not just about sales, it's not just about promotion, it's not just about product, uh, place, uh, price. Okay, it's uh, much bigger than that. Okay, uh, uh, definition by American Marketing Association. Marketing is the activity set of institutions and processes for creating, communicating, delivering and exchanging offering that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. So marketing is not just about uh, satisfying customers' needs and uh, wants. Okay. So this is from another uh, diagram uh, from Gupta 2016. Okay, so there are several uh, participants of Civiting uh, Working Group. Uh, and then uh, talk about uh, firm resources, okay, about the resources, uh, capability, okay, this is the uh, resources about the tangible and intangible uh, resources and how these resources lead to superior financial performance. Then we go to digital, more specific to digital uh, marketing and digital technology, okay, so the, the term digital marketing, okay. So again, when, when we talk about digital marketing, uh, most people uh, describe digital marketing as a social media, about promoting your product in the social media and so on, so on. But uh, following the American uh, Marketing Association definition, digital marketing may be seen as activities, institution and processes facilitated by digital technologies for creating, communicating and delivering value for customers and other stakeholders. And I take the definition by Kanan and Lee 2017, which adopt a more inclusive perspective and define digital marketing as an adaptive technology enabled process by which firm collaborate with customers and partners to jointly create, communicate, deliver and sustain value for all stakeholders. Okay, and this, all these resources, the digital marketing, digital technology, okay, can enhance the uh, value co-creation uh, among the CBT uh, enterprises and also the stakeholders, which leads to financial sustainability. Okay, according to Rahman et al, 2020, financial sustainability in SME is the ability to cover all the expenses through their profit and to create enough finances to support its growth by reducing its expenses or improving its revenue. And with this financial sustainability, okay, so we believe that this uh, CBT enterprises will be able to create job, okay, uh, and give more benefit to the local uh, community. So this is the proposed uh, conceptual framework for value co-creation in uh, CBT uh, in con uh, community-based tourism. So these are the antecedents, the resources, okay, the digital technology resources, digital technology capability, digital marketing resources, and digital marketing cap capability. Okay, when we look at the digital technology resources, digital marketing resources, this is, uh, uh, this are, uh, this refer to the uh, tangible resources, okay, uh, the equipment, the machines, okay, the computers, the smartphone, or any any uh, equipment or machine uh, related to technology, while the digital technology capability and digital marketing capability is uh, more towards the the intangible resources, the knowledge, the skills, how the, the CBT operators, owners or operators, how they utilize how they use their skills and knowledge to fully utilize the technology available and all this will lead to the value co-creation uh, in cbt and uh, leads to the financial system sustainability and as a conclusion okay so this study is expected to contribute to the body of knowledge which is the development of cbt from marketing management perspective okay, as a whole 
not just promotion and product development. For practical uh, contribution, it might assist the Malaysian government to devise. Okay, we go back to the target uh, 8.9 to devise and implement policies to promote sustainable tourism that creates jobs and promotes local culture and products by 2020. And we hope we can achieve this wawasan kemakmuran bersama or uh, Malaysian uh, shared prosperity vision 2020 and also the uh, sustainable development go that i con conclude my presentation thank you for taking longer than it is supposed to be okay so i really hope that uh the audience can give some feedback on this uh, framework okay the relationship between the uh, digital resources uh, towards value co-creation uh, and financial sustainability from tourism point of view. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Madam Melinda. So any, any feedbacks? Because we have here uh, experts in uh, CBT, uh, con uh, community-based tourism. Maybe you can help out uh, Madam Melinda here. Anyone with questions or feedback? In your opinion, uh, do you think that this digital Okay, digital technology, digital capability uh, will contribute uh, to the, the development, the growth of CV, CBT. Uh, Madam Melinda, uh, I'm, I'm not an expert in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, community-based tourism, but I, I just would like to, to understand further because if, if uh, from a layman's perspective, eh, uh, uh in, in this framework uh, where where does the in what sense does the co-creation happen because uh if if you look at the antecedents we have the digital technology resources capability resources those are from the, the firms right or, or am i mistaken yes yes uh, so in in a sense uh how does the uh, community uh, co-create in this in this framework okay. based on your reading and based on your based on your opinion Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, value co-creation. Okay, so let me go back to this. Uh, the pro, uh, study by S. Gupta, 2016. Okay, he summarized that uh, there are several uh, participants of a CBT working group. Okay, I'm sure uh, CBT scholars are... Uh, very familiar with these uh, participants, uh, the list of participants involved in CBT. Okay, so uh, normally when we talk about value co-creation, okay, firms or organization, they uh, only uh, focus on value co-creation between firm and uh, customers, okay, uh, firm and customers. Whereas, okay, in CBT, in order for CBT to operate, okay, they need uh, supports or participation from other uh, actors as well. Okay, they need cooperation from local communities, from operators and businesses, tourism organization. Okay, this is uh, related to uh, ecotourism. Uh, NGOs and community development organization. So, by uh, uh, using digital technology, okay, by using the digital technology, uh, which includes the digital marketing uh, technology, this CBT can be more independent. Okay, can be more independent. They can. Uh, uh, this can lead to uh, CBT. Uh, enterprise empowerment okay uh, actually uh, if I explain the the current situation of CBT in Malaysia okay they they are more depend dependable on uh, the government okay the government but uh, actually when if they are uh, from uh, based on the literature okay which is uh, I, I didn't explain in detail <laughs> okay due to the time constraint okay Okay, so uh, when they uh, 
involved when they use okay when they use digital technology in their businesses in promoting and not not just promoting okay uh, in uh, especially when they are communicating uh, with this all these actors uh, in uh, CBT all the actors involved in CBT okay uh, they can they they will have this uh, their own community which involve all the actors okay maybe they can use uh, of course social media okay uh, to communicate and then they can promote their product using social media but in order to do that they have to have the capability and we know okay cbt is located in rural area okay and with that uh, in that situation this cbt with the location in the rural uh, rural area okay they will have uh, they will face challenges in the infrastructure okay the infrastructure okay uh, the internet connection especially how can they use the technology if they have uh, uh, constraint okay they have uh, problems okay with this infrastructure uh, they don't have enough uh, infrastructure for them to uh, use the technology however okay if we can prove okay through this study okay we can prove that with the help of digital technology it can enhance okay the cbt business okay they, we can empower the cbt uh, operators make them less dependable uh, on the government okay we can empower this cbt business so they can uh, give more benefit to the local community okay uh, uh, they can grow the business okay they can reach the uh, customers or the customers or tourists okay in tourism you call tourists okay from all over the world okay promote the their own product have their own website have their own uh, communication channel okay so they will be uh, they will be able to uh, sustain their business and create more job which is the objective one of the goal in SDG. Okay, so this is a mega trend. Okay, so technology, uh, like uh, what I shared here, the gap here. Okay, the mega trend now is the technology, and the current trend now is about the sustainability. And of course, my study here focusing more on the economic sustainability. Okay, not the environment, okay, sustainability causes of environment, uh, society, and economic. And my study will focus more on economic sustainability, the current trend, and the mega trend now is the technology. So we have, we will try to, uh, we will try to develop a model, okay, a model for uh, value co-creation, how this digital technology, uh, the digital marketing technology towards the value cooperation and also financial sustainability. Okay, so that's why uh, the in my conclusion, uh, we hope that uh, this model, okay, this model can contribute and help ass or assist the Malaysian government uh, to devise and implement policies. Okay, maybe they will... Uh, uh focus uh more on building uh in more infrastructure okay uh digital technology infrastructure the internet infrastructure in the rural area all right thank you madam melinda i, I was actually uh, uh, agree i agree with your your opinion just now in terms of uh there is uh right now there is a there is a certain over reliance on the government to you know to create value here okay all right thank you for that uh hi paul melinda uh just a simple question from me i believe that this is a conceptual paper of yours um so are you planning to do it as a qualitative study or quantitative study and who will be your target respondents thank you okay so uh i am planning to do it uh, to do a quantitative study Okay, quantitative study and my, 
the unit of analysis would be the CBT operators in uh, Malaysia. So I have this quite large number of uh, population. Okay, so total number of uh, participants or houses uh, registered homestay, eh? focus on the registered homestay clusters uh, by state with uh, the Ministry of Arts, Tourism and Culture, 4,286. And we have this, uh, the cluster by state, the number by state as well. So this would be my uh, population. The that population. means you're focusing the whole Malaysia or any specific states or any specific places? Oh, uh, specific uh, states only. Okay, uh, if we look at the shared prosperity, vision, shared prosperity, prosperity vision, okay, 2030, okay, the government has uh, assigned, sort of assigned which state to focus on. Okay, so there are states that will be focusing on heritage and culture. Okay, so since the SDG, uh, remember the eight, the eight point, uh, target eight point one. Okay, it's related to promote local culture and products. So I will be focusing on the states that are focusing that are assigned to focus on the uh, culture and heritage. Okay, six Thank you. states. If I'm not mistaken, there are six states. Excluding Sabah and Sarawak. Excluding Sabah and Sarawak. Only in Peninsular Malaysia. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, I believe the question and answer session is already uh, finished. Five minutes is already up. And I believe the next presenter is uh, uh, ex, uh, is waiting for to present. I would like to thank you, Ms. Uh, Madam Melinda, for that presentation. So now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Pariwat Somnuek to present his paper. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Okay, let me show my slide presentations. Introduce myself first. I'm Pariwat Somnik, lecturer from Faculty of Tourism Innovations, Bonrashtani University in the northeastern part of Thailand. So today, we would like to present our research topics are key success factor of community-based tourism management, the case study of Ban Kok Mueang Thai communities in Buriram province, the northeastern part of Thailand. So let's figure to our rational. Uh, you know that CBT is considered an alternative tourism management form administered by a committee for its greater and reasonable benefits. It involves sustainable tourism developments consistent with globalizations and focusing on sales responsibilities and sales reliance. Okay, and Bangkok Mueang, the representative of Thailand, was established in 1937 with over 80 years of historical background in Buriram province. In an earlier period, CBT in Ban Kok Mueang were funded by an academic service project for the development of community tourism in 2005, almost uh, 16 years of development. An outstanding tourism perspective of the communities was tourism learning choices and activities provided for visitors. So uh, in this, in Marisas, we compare with another community based in Cambodia named Bantai Chimar, is Bantamian Jerry's province. Considered as a prototype CBT village in the country, have a regional relationship and had similar CBT context to Bangkok Mueang because of its cross regional relationships of the two villages. So that's why our for our regional selections, Ban Kok Mueang and Ban Tai Chimera were chosen as CBT of the both commodities was flooded as tourism commodities in the similar period. And there were 120 kilometers far from each other 
or two hours traveling by cars. Furthermore, the communities could connect to a plenty of attractive destinations, both natural and cultural tourism routes along the border areas. So that's why I show you to compare between uh, the highlight of the tourist attractions between on your left hand side is belong to Banco Mueang Prasad Mueang Tam Sanctuary. Okay. And on the right hand side is Bantai Chima Temple in Bantai Chima Village. And also another one, the uh, villagers have a lot of products such as here and also both villages have the same similar product to sell to the tourists. And they make to produce by themselves in the village and they sell for the souvenir for the tourists when the tourists visit their village. So in my objective, I said the two objectives there. The first one, I would like to investigate a progress of community-based tourism spar in Bangkok Mueang with compare with Bantai Chima community in Cambodia. And another one, I would like to show the key success factor of CPT management in Bangkok Mueang that corresponds, corresponds to the patients. Uh, my expected result, we expected for positive social implications the finding of the resource may be established a CBT network and corporations applying to promote cultural tourism and villages quality of life simultaneously. So that's why a lot of text, a lot of literature everywhere from community-based tourism, benefits of CBT, context of CBTs, and benchmarking method, development of community networks and latest studies. And I found that that is my frameworks of the study or constituent frameworks. I would like to study a progress of CBT benchmarking between the two similar CBT contexts. And we find out the key success factor of CBT prototype commodities uh, in four contents. The first tourism resources the second organizations and participations, the third management, and the last learning process. That is my uh, conceptual frameworks for my research. So our my methodologies, uh, we are mixed mixed research between qualitative and quantitative research for the selected area. Okay, we we. Uh, for the qualitative research, we take 30 stakeholders that's representative for the two villages. And for quantitative research, uh, we purpose sampling from the volunteer tourists that visit the Ban Kok Myung is 364 tourists. So, uh, my research instruments, we take both interview and by focus group discussion techniques. And also we take the questionnaire from to the tourists. And after that, uh, we take for the, we get the results. So I would like to present to two results. The first, to benchmarking analysis of a progress of CBT context between Bangkok Bill of Thailand and Bantai Chimar of Cambodia. And the second result, I would like to present three success factors concerning CBT management of Bangkok only. Okay, for, for the first result, we benchmarking analysis of the other, the other four contents, the first between the tourism resources and community culture, and the second one, the communities, organizations, and people participations. The third one for the com communities management, and the last one for the communities learning process. So that's all for the four, four contents, but we take benchmarking to compare between the two communities. It's, it's very similar, and also they 
just to select to be the prototype of the two country. Uh, okay, for the second result, we take the uh, quantitative research. Uh, okay, we take the first for uh, average, for to for the average level, average level of the four contents from the key success factor that show the overall average average is about its highest level and also show for the other four contents, both tourism resource and community culture, also community organizations and religious participations, communities management, and the last for communities learning process, it show all highest level. So that show overall high at very well. And after that, I take a multiple regression analysis for the statistics to forecast, to forecast their key success factor concerning CVT management of Bantai Shmar village, oh, sorry, of Bad Kopyung village. So it show only, it show only, it show only there, there were only three independents for labor. That is was found that multiple correlations co coefficient, coefficients equal to are zero point eight four four two four zero four and they were inferring to imply variance of successful in CBT management at uh, sixty four point four at just a square zero point six four four. That's why only three. That's that's mean this one, this one, uh, committee's learning. The second one, community management. And the last one for the committee's organizations and religious participations. That's two minutes left. Two minutes left. Okay, thank you. So for, we go to the discussion. Okay, we go to the discussion. The results from in this study corresponds with the study of Mani Road and Puku. Uh, and many researchers showing that a successful CBT mainly rely on a common interest, coordinations, cooperations, and a powerful association between customer, suppliers, investors, and competitors. And another one, the findings were also consistent with American producting and productivity and quality center. Okay, and another researcher stating that benchmarking was clearly helpful to state the current capabilities and effectiveness on performances of an organization and the benchmark data could be applied to improve its potentials for sustainable organizations development. Okay, for the last discussion, the reason of key success factor was in line with an another researcher in that appropriate independence variable could be used for forecasting successful CBT and marketing management, especially online marketing promotion, interesting advertisements, advertisements, indirect marketing, channels, products design and local productions highly influence the purchasing decisions on products, including services. Let's go to the conclusion. The findings demonstrate that communities should develop tourism products and services, tourism personnel, and necessary facility to increase new targets of tourists, powerful business negotiations, CBT sustainability, and transboundary tourism competitiveness. The benefits offer advantage to visitors as tourists can discover local lifestyles and experience different cultures between Thailand and Cambodia for the recommendations for further studies. The CBT networking development consistent with communities' needs and policies of development conversations of the two countries, which least affects our local economy, societies, and culture, and marketing promotional methods to advance CBT sustainability and positive association between the countries. And we, as last for the last, were social implications on CBT network of the two communities. As previously mentioned, the regions of the two areas 
uh, along national borders together could be provided cooperative integrated management of tourism development, which was at an increasing level in new tourism products and services, public relations and English communication skill of local tour guides of the communities. So thank you for your kind attention. All right, thank you, Mr. Parivat Somnek. That's very uh, interesting uh, presentation. Uh, any question? I open the floor uh, for questions. Anyone with questions? Okay. So I inter I, I am the lecturer of uh, Ubon Rajasthani University in the Faculty of Tourism Innovations in the master degree, and I only focused on CBT since I graduated our PhD for for. 15 years in Thailand. I'm very interested in CBT and I was born in the northeastern part of Thailand as well. So I, I, I used to visit Sabah and Salawak for international conference in business, but this is my first time that I know from Nida and another King Bongkut Institute that joy with your university in, in Penang, right? Yes. Yeah, it's very good, very good. And and so that's why I interested to propose my article to your conference. So thank you. So th that's why that is the part of my research. Uh, we, 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 we do a lot of research more than that, more than that, that I choose only uh, some objective to present to your conference. Mm -hmm. I, I, I might have one question, uh, Mr. Parwa. Uh, let's say we have these two benchmarking of each other, right? Yeah. Uh, how do they develop, uh, you know, competitiveness between the two? Because they, I know they want to start off to be the same, but uh, in the end, how do they want to be different from each other, if, if, if you can say like that, to compete for tourists? Uh, okay, okay. I, I, I select the prototyped CBT of each country between our country, Thailand. Mm -hmm. That's Ban Komung is the number one of mm. the Thai in the northeastern part of Thailand and also as well in Cambodia. I used to do the research there, here in Ban Thai Shuma. It's really similar historical background and a lot of tourism results. It's really similar. And also, you know, the the two villages that knew each other very well. So that's why I would like to promote, to give the policy to the local governors, to the governments of each country, of each of the two countries to, to do the uh, CBT business together. It makes more in advance, you know. That, yes. That's why I compare, the, by, I take their benchmarking techniques in 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 full con contents all it's, right yeah that's right and okay. i answer your question yes thank you <laughs> i'm happy to hear your answer because uh, all the while you're answering i can see you smiling it's very nice <laughs> yeah yeah Okay. All right. Any more with questions? Yeah, I can check. Very well. I'm okay. um I'm actually not from the uh, tourism based um, line, but I'm from management. But I just wonder. Okay, because we know that uh, this COVID nineteen has actually um, has actually uh, bring down uh, this tourism industry. So does this COVID nineteen also have the same effect on your community based tourism, or uh, it doesn't really give any effect? On your uh, CBT, just wonder because I'm not from your uh, from your background. You see, thank you. Can I understand you clearly? You you mean that the CBT how how it impact to the village? That's 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 that yes. This era now now uh, uh, during this uh, pandemic now is it really affects or your CBT because I believe that CBT is more towards your community based tourism right, uh, local right. 
Does it yeah. really any effect like the the you mean uh, the situation of virus corona? Yeah. Okay, I think it it's very infected. Okay. Very because infected. Of tourism in Thailand is very very very, very it, it mean it's very important for our our uh, economics. <laughs> the, uh, the government, the government, the Thai government promote tourism to be the, it's like the, the tool to help the village and the local people and also to, uh, to support the country. Yeah, that's, that's right. When the outbreaking of the virus corona occurs, so it impacts a lot. But, but that's why uh, many organizations such as from the government and also from the local governors of each villages in in their every part of the part of in Thailand uh, they they adjust themselves to do like like the other researcher present we take uh, some technologies yeah to some technology in front some technology to to do instead of direct sale that's right and also, I used to help the villagers to do the co-matching business between the foreigners, between sorry, between the international uh, entrepreneur. Yeah, that that's why they're interested to send the tourists from Korea to take a trip in uh, Bangkok, in Thailand. I used to be the translators. That's that's why another another way that we adjust the way how to uh, attract the tourists because you know, we cannot go in touch with many tourists so that we take the virtual <laughs> connection right M many ways to to do otherwise Thailand will be uh, slow down sure so that's so that's why uh, we wait for the time after the disruption of the virus corona decline, we hope it will be better in our CBT and also in our ASEAN country as well. Okay. Am I answer your question? Yeah, okay, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Madam Maniati, do you have a question? No. <laughs> oh no, I thought you were not there because you want to ask a question, okay. All right, thank you for that fruitful session, uh, Mr. Pariwat. Okay, I would like to invite uh, the final presenter for today's session, uh, Madam Mariati, with her paper, The Effect of Entrepreneurship, Education and Entrepreneurial Motivation on Work Readiness of Fashion Design Study Program Students. Okay, the floor is yours. Madam Mariati, do you need some time to prepare? Yeah. Uh, maybe we can have a, a short five minutes break, everyone. Uh, we can have a short five minutes break for Madam Mariati to uh, get herself settled. And then we'll come back after five minutes, if that's allowed by the moderator. <laughs> Thank you.
dibuka apa terlihat
Uh, Madam Manati, uh, what, what seems to be the problem? Yeah. Can we help? Yeah. Oops, sorry, sorry. Apa sudah terlihat? Maybe, maybe the moderator can assist. Me, my, 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 I know what's the problem right now. Of they are right. They, they, they Is it that you can't share your screen? I think it's better. Maybe you can try to leave this meeting session first and, and rejoin it later. Up to 
after a few seconds. So based on based on all these findings, this is the model that we have developed. Because currently we have three of you right now. That's why that's a problem for with the sound. Saya saja untuk uh, leave dulu dan rejoin kembali. However, what we have recommended to this business model for the economic sustainability is strategic intent. Strategic intent is to differentiate their offering uh, while mungkin sebab banyak screen value creation. Okay, cuba value leave dulu and rejoin and, kembali. And value drivers and through value capital. Yeah, if you can ask from me. Yeah, bawah the tu. The uh, button lima dari kiri ada yang anak panah tu untuk present now. Sudah tapi tidak bisa. Tidak bisa. Are you using MacBook actually? So we have we provide the recommendations based on the findings and the theoretical underpinning. Well, these are the recommendations that we have given for them. We have recommended them to recreate their activities. Menggunakan MacBook their values, ataupun their uh, leadership, their network, their laptop biasa. Apakah laptop? The laptop. Part, we have given the Bukan MacBook kan? Uh, make sure you use Chrome actually. You need to use Chrome. To new, new, uh, Ayur, and, and, ya. and so on. So, yeah? if I summarize you the huge implications uh, that Gain from the recommended model that they have. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. They will be able to minimize the illegal activities. They will be getting more tourists. They will be their competitive status. They will be able to the social and environmental sustainability that they are losing right now. And I speak in your Azima. In term revenue. Yes, yeah. While staying. Ini kenapa ada suaranya? So, you see, it is easy. Saya sebenarnya tengok on the world. Oh yeah. Okay. Come maaf. Uh, Madam Mariati, is, yeah? is it possible to send us a copy of your slide? Maybe we can look at it together. Maybe you can uh, join the group and WhatsApp us the the slide so that we can see the slide together. Kirim. Oh. Sudah saya kirim slide-nya ke Mr. Siapa ini? Sebentar. Saya lihat. Saya mohon maaf ya, kendalanya luar biasa. Uh, Mister Andi, saya kirim ke Mister Andi PPT-nya. Andi Anderson, Rinang, saya kirim ke sana. Baik, kami cuma dapatkan. Uh, saya juga mohon maaf, saya tidak pandai cakap bahasa Inggris. Oh, tak apa-apa. Apa -apa. <laughs> Oke, okay, dapat. Uh, kami tengah tunggu sebentar ya. Yeah. Maaf.
Okey sebentar ya saya cuba kongsikan. Ya. Ini saya juga berkomunikasi dengan beliau. Ah baik. Boleh puan? Ya. Boleh Terima ya? kasih. Terima Dapat kasih. saya tolong. Saya boleh bantu. <laughs> okay, okay. Terima kasih. Uh, baik. Uh, mohon maaf sebelumnya. Saya masih harus berbicara dengan bahasa Indonesia. Salam sehat semua. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Ya. Penelitian saya tentang kita sekarang ada di era 4.0. Sebentar kita lagi akan masuk di uh, 5.0. Untuk itu saya tertarik untuk meneliti tentang pengaruh pendidikan kewirausahaan fashion dan motivasi berusaha terhadap uh, apa namanya employability skill prodi mahasiswa tata busana di era revolusi industri 5.0. Oke. Okay. Uh, latar belakang dari apa nama penelitian ini adalah saya ingin melihat dari dekat ya yeah, sumber daya manusia yang akan kita persiapkan untuk menjadi tenaga kerja profesional berdaya saing tinggi dengan membekali dan mendengar keterampilan digital abad 21 ya oke okay. yang dapat diterapkan pada industri kreatif fashion 5.0 kemudian perkembangan pendidikan kewirausahaan pada pendidikan formal tidak hanya akan meningkatkan jumlah dan kompetisi wirausaha baru yang memasar yang memasuki pasar tetapi juga meningkatkan peluang perusaha baru, perusaha baru untuk bertahan dan bersaing di pasar. Yang berikutnya bahwa wirausaha yang memiliki motivasi berwirausaha yang tinggi cenderung memiliki kemauan untuk berhasil dalam berwirausaha. Nah, penelitian ini dilakukan untuk mengisi gap penelitian yang mengidentifikasi hubungan antara pendidikan kewirausahaan fashion, motivasi berusaha, berwirausaha dan keterampilan kerja di era atau memasuki era revolusi industri 5.0 untuk bekerja di industri kreatif di sektor fashion. Nah, tujuan penelitian ini adalah tentu uh, ingin mengetahui ingin mengetahui pengaruh pendidikan kewirausahaan fashion terhadap motivasi berwirausaha bagi mahasiswa prodi tata busana. Demikian pula dengan mengetahui pengaruh pendidikan kewirausahaan terhadap kesiapan kerja para mahasiswa dan e, mengetahui pengaruh motivasi berwirausaha terhadap kesiapan kerja mahasiswa prodi tata busana. E, berikutnya adalah mengetahui pengaruh e, pendidikan kewirausahaan fashion mahasiswa prodi tata busana terhadap era industri atau era revolusi industri 5.0. Kemudian mengetahui pengaruh motivasi berwirausaha mahasiswa prodi tata busana di era Revolusi Industri 5.0. Yang terakhir mengetahui pengaruh kesiapan kerja mahasiswa prodi tata busana terhadap uh, era Revolusi Industri 5.0. Nah, diketahui bahwa uh, yang dimaksud dengan di sini dalam penelitian ini uh, pendidikan kewirausahaan itu dengan variabel uh, kejujuran, kreativitas, kemudian kepemimpinan, berani mengambil risiko modiste fashion product kreatif dan fashion designer itu indikator. Kemudian untuk motivasinya pencapaian, rekognisi, tanggung jawab, penggunaan pekerjaan itu sendiri dan kemajuan. Sedangkan uh, employability skill itu tentang kerjasama, kemudian pemecahan masalah, perencanaan bekerja dan penggunaan teknologi. Sedangkan di era revolusi industri 5.0 mencoba mengangkat tentang uh, SDM yang akan mempengaruhi gitu ya karena sikapnya ada lima variabel di mana ada beberapa yang harus diketahui oleh para mahasiswa. Nah, selanjutnya kita mencoba membuat kerangka konsep bahwa saya mempunyai persepsi bahwa pendidikan kewirausahaan dan motivasi itu mempunyai pengaruh yang sangat kuat terhadap 
kinerja dan uh, memasuki era industri uh, 5.0. Kemudian saya ingin melihat dari masing-masing indikator itu mana yang paling berperan Ap di dalam pendidikan kewirausahaan fashion, kemudian motivasi, uh, kemudian kesiapan kerja dan memasuki era industri era industrialisasi. Sehingga saya menggunakan uh, katakanlah penelitian tentang kuantitatif dengan korelasional. Pesertanya adalah semua prodi mahasiswa prodi tata busana yang menurut uh, teori sloping saya mendapat 210 orang. Kemudian 31 kelas itu tidak saya gunakan karena untuk uji coba instrumen. Kemudian pengumpulan data menggunakan kuesioner atau instrumen yang telah divalidasi dan analisis data itu menggunakan PLS atau SEM, Structural Equation Modeling. Jadi kenapa menggunakan itu? Karena saya ingin melihat dari indikator itu mana yang paling ber, uh, berpengaruh terhadap, uh, yang paling berpengaruh ya, begitu. Kemudian tentu hasil hipotesisnya sudah menunjukkan bahwa masing-masing mempunyai kekuatan, gitu ya, kekuatan baik pendidikan kewirausahaan fashion, motivasi, uh, kinerja, maupun uh, terhadap sikap mahasiswa di era uh, revolusi industri. Nah, selanjutnya ini adalah hasil analisis Einer model. Kita tahu uh, kekuatan daripada SEM ini adalah untuk mengetahui sejauh mana dia berpengaruh masing-masing. Kemudian hasil penelitian membuktikan bahwa pendidikan kewirausahaan secara uh, substantif terukur pada indikator kreativitas. Jadi indikator kreativitas kreativitas ada sangat berpengaruh. Kemudian untuk motivasi berwirausaha secara substantif terukur pada indikator tanggung jawab. Kemudian uh, next. Kemudian motivasi berwirausaha secara signifikan berpengaruh terhadap kesiapan kerja mahasiswa perdi tata busana dan selanjutnya adalah keberhasilan pendidikan kewirausahaan fashion lebih kuat bila dibandingkan dengan motivasi berwirausaha dan kesiapan kesiapan kerja uh, terhadap uh, era revolusi industri fashion uh, industri 5.0. Kemudian kesiapan kerja secara signifikan berpengaruh. Jadi kesiapan kerja mahasiswa itu sangat berpengaruh terhadap era revolusi industri 5.0. Dan kesiapan kerja atau sumber daya manusia menjadi prioritas utama menghadapi era revolusi industri 5.0. Nah berikutnya ya. Tentu konklusinya atau kesimpulan rekomendasi adalah keberhasilan pendidikan kewirausahaan fashion akan sangat signifikan menguat, mem, uh, menguatkan motivasi berwirausaha. Dorongan motivasi berwirausaha untuk meningkatkan kesiapan kerja adalah lebih kuat dibandingkan keberhasilan pendidikan kewirausahaan fashion. Keberhasilan pendidikan fashion uh, untuk meningkatkan di era revolusi industri Pemirsa adalah lebih kuat dibandingkan dengan motivasi biro usaha dan kesiapan kerja. Indikator indikator paling uh, variabel menentukan penelitian ini akan uh, kreativitas pada pendidikan perusahaan fashion, tanggung jawab pada motivasi biro usaha memecahkan masalah pada employability skill dan uh, di era revolusi industri 5.0. Demikian yang bisa saya sampaikan. Mohon maaf. Uh, ya. Mungkin salah salah kamar, maksudnya di passion, sehingga mungkin juga tidak mengetahui gitu. Jadi saya mohon maaf, diminta Pak Prodi mengirim artikel, ya artikel sesuai dengan bidang saya. Bidang saya adalah fashion education. Oke, itu. Oh, silahkan bila ada sesuatu yang perlu kita diskusikan. Tapi mohon maaf, saya eh, sangat terima kasih dan diberi kesempatan. Ya, mohon maaf sekali lagi saya tidak pandai cara bahasa Inggris. Jadi saya tapi PPT sudah saya usahakan menggunakan bahasa Inggris. Hai Puan Mariati, uh, yes. saya ada satu soalan. Yeah. Puan Mariati ada guna PLSM untuk buat analisis kan? 
Ya. Okey, uh, boleh saya tahu tak apa uh, result untuk AVE, Composite Reliability dan R square of your um, uh, apa uh, findings tu? Uh, okay, okay. Sebentar. Uh, ya, yeah. PLS itu sebenarnya analisis untuk menguji uh, korelasional antara variabel. Nah, setiap variabel itu memiliki indikator. Jika kita ingin mengetahui indikator mana yang paling dominan yang berpengaruh terhadap uh, uh, apa namanya variabel lain, maka itu sebaiknya menggunakan SEM atau VLS. Itu yang saya tahu. Sehingga berkali-kali saya menggunakan itu sehingga kita tahu soal permasalahan yang terjadi, yang harus kita atasi. Seperti itu. Uh, tapi bila Puan buat analisis tu, dia ada uh, dia ada I amin mean, analisis ada keluar dia punya result untuk your R square to prove you punya factor tu semua um, um, how would I say uh, factor ada mempengaruhi uh, dependent variable kan? Ya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Puan ada dapat R square. R square tu berapa yang dia uh, uh, I amin mean, the result of your R square? nilai of atau puan just tengok uh, relationship dia saja ke puan saja tengok apa hubungan dia saja ke ya ya, ya kita uh, tidak dalam sem itu diketahui uh, mana yang paling berdominasi begitu ya oh, dari okay. angka-angka kita bisa lihat karena di satu dilihat mana yang tidak berkorelasi begitu di Analisis saya yang tidak berkorelasi itu ada tentang motivasi terhadap eh, langsung berhubungan pada eh, era revolusi industri itu sangat kecil. Nah, tetapi yang lain, variabel yang lain itu sangat besar. Jadi di bawah 0,05 gitu. Sehingga dengan demikian bahwa eh, motivasi itu tidak langsung berkorelasi terhadap eh, era revolusi industri 5.0 gitu. Tetapi dia mempunyai sumbangan yang tinggi terhadap uh, keberhasilan uh, pe, apa namanya uh, pendidikan kewirausahaan fashion begitu. Itu okay. diketahui juga dari masing-masing indikatornya sehingga ketika kita memilih stem maka setiap indikator tidak uh, diusahakan tidak ada persamaan uh, yang mempunyai makna yang sama sehingga nanti bisa ketika kita running di dalam komputer itu akan menjadi uh, tidak terdeteksi begitu jadi tidak baik. Jadi harus running kembali seperti itu. Itu pengalaman saya dalam penelitian ini. Gitu. Okay, terima kasih. Ya. Yeah, yeah. uh, ada lagi mungkin? Ya, yeah, saya katakan saya salah salah kamar kan ini kan bidangnya hospitality hotel and hospitality karena masuk di bidang fashion gitu karena memang bukan buda, bukan ranahnya seperti itu jadi nggak apa-apa betul pertanyaan arahnya ke analisis Raja speaker Okay, nasib baik. Terima, ter, terima kasih Cik Jusri. Thank you Cik Jusri yeah. for that. Yeah. I uh, Okay, I would like to invite everyone to switch on your camera uh, so that we can uh, have a photo session, a group photo, uh, so that we can take this moment together. Everyone. Especially the presenters. Let's see your, your lovely faces. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm going to take a screenshot. Uh, everyone smile. Look at the camera, smile. Okay, another one. Thumbs up, thumbs up maybe. Okay, <laughs> all right. One, two. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, from the, um, on behalf of uh, the conference, I would like to thank everyone, the attendees. I would like to thank the, uh, the presenter, Madam Pandia Danadi, Madam Melinda, uh, Mr. Pariwat Somnuek, 
uh, Ibu Marniati uh, Terima kasih kerana hadir ke dalam konferensi ini Thank you very much uh, for everyone's uh, participation and for your sharing session for today And this ends our uh, session for today We heard uh, five lovely, uh, not including mine uh, uh, All the lovely presentation from all these uh, 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 wonderful papers uh, on behalf of the conference, I would like to apologize if we make any mistake during this session. And I wish to wish you all good luck. And thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>